Welcome to the making of the Long Range Sensor, a kind of sci-fi props inspired by Star Wars. Keep watching until the end of the video, I have nice tips to help you make your own build. Enjoy! Everything started when I discovered a box for a fishing rod. What you see is the lid of the box, it's long and not too deep. Perfect for a new panel that I wanted to have a shape different from the two others I built previously. This thin sheet of wood would become the front of my panel, where all the LEDs and the switches would be attached. The size of the panel fits wonderfully in this place between my Star Wars communications interceptor and my neutron star detector. I printed a design on a sheet of paper for the position of the LEDs and some forms. I got some inspiration from the Star Wars Room Builder group on Facebook and also on Pinterest. The idea was to test placement of some griblies on the front panel. I don't remember how many combinations I tried. I think after one hour testing a lot of griblies, I forced myself to choose one combination. Next was to use a laser cutter on a chipboard to test the pieces, before laser cutting the more expensive acrylic material. Time to test the chipboard pieces that were laser cut. I find it reassuring to touch the pieces and see physically how they fit on the panel instead of looking at a print. I then laser cut the sheet of wood to test the holes with the different components. I want to make sure the holes are the right size and that I can tightly secure each component. Here I am placing square LED switches. And this one is a rotary encoder. I also laser cut the frame on a sheet of wood and everything seems nice to me now. Here is the laser cut pieces of acrylic placed on the front panel. Another test with the components and the griblies. To me it's important to recheck everything between each build phase. Probably I've already noticed that the front panel don't cover entirely the wood box. And that's because my laser cutter is limited to 18 inches and the box is 19 inches. At that time I didn't know how we're going to hide the gap. But I found a great gribbly to hide it and you're going to see it later. And these are transparent acrylic tiles that I will use to diffuse the light of a 5mm LED. There will be a LED behind each tile and I have a nice solution to diffuse the light and get a uniform block of light. The link is in the video description, give it a try. You will see the result at the end of this video. I finally decided to get rid of the wood and use acrylic for the front panel and the frame. I discovered that the wood was not strong enough and cracked easily. It was also bending when I tested the push button of the rotary encoder. And this is yet another test with the new acrylic frame the electronic components and the griblies. Next was a painting job at my very rudimentary painting station. I applied first a grey primer and after it dried for 24 hours I applied a dark grey color which will become the main color of the panel. Now fast forward several hours of painting and gluing the acrylic pieces and griblies on the front panel. I did the finishing with an airbrush I received as a gift on Christmas. I am now assembling the acrylic tiles to diffuse the light of a 5mm LED. I place one fully assembled on the back of the panel, with an acrylic tile on the other side, in order to test it to see if the light of the LED is well diffused. I glue the copper wire around the holes where I am going to place each diffuser. Each ground of LED will be soldered on this copper wire, cutting the number of ground wires just to only one going to the Arduino. 
I then glue the diffuser behind each hole making sure I am fully covering them. Next was soldering each ground pin of the LEDs to the copper wire which will be used as the main ground. And without forgetting to solder a 220 ohm resistor to each positive pin on the LEDs. I used GST SM connectors to make the connections to the Arduino easier. It was very hard learning how to properly crimp the wire. I solder a wire to each end of the resistors. I insulate each positive pin with the resistor with a heat shrink tubing. You just have to heat it and it shrinks around the pin and the resistor, insulating them completely. Here is the completed job for all the six diffusers with the JST connectors plugged on the Arduino. Here is the look so far with the panel sitting in its proper position on the box. Now let's fast track to the completed long range sensor. I want to spare you seeing me doing more soldering and programming. It took hours and I burned an Arduino Nano through it. You see the greebly hiding the gap. It's a 70 years old tube that looks amazing. And here it is, sitting at its proper place. I am powering my three devices with 12 volt, and the Arduino devices only draws around 210 milliamps. Thanks for watching, guys.